Morning, church. It's great to see you all this morning. Would you stand up and sing with us? We have a new song for you this morning. forever in your name the name of Jesus we trust the name of Jesus you are the only king forever almighty God we lift you higher you are the only king forever forevermore we are victorious you are the only king forever almighty god we lift you higher you are the only king forever forevermore you are victorious Unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. We bring our expectations, our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. Oh, we trust the name of Jesus. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Forevermore, we are victorious. You are the only King forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. From age to age you reign. Your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. From age to age you reign. Your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. From age to age you reign. Your kingdom has no end. We lift our banner high. We lift the name of Jesus. From age to age you reign. Your kingdom has no end. You are the only king forever. Mighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore. You are victorious, you are the only king forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever. Forevermore, you are victorious. Because 
because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know holds the future and life is worth living just because he lives God sent his son they call him Jesus he came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the is worth living just because he lives we hope to hold our newborn baby and feel the pride and joy The calm assurance this child can face in certain days because Christ lives, because He lives, I can face tomorrow because He Fear is gone because I know He holds the future. Life is worth living just because He I'll cross that river I'll find life's fire No war with pain And then as death Gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory I'll know He lives, amen, because He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone, because I
church, you can go ahead and have a seat. And as you uh, just let your heart dwell on our Lord and Savior Jesus, on the fact that He lives, that He is with us, that He uh, He loves you without end, without comparison, without equal. And in that spirit, let's let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for today. We celebrate you. Lord, we celebrate your life. We celebrate your crucifixion and your resurrection that opens the way for us, that gives us new life. Because you live, we can face tomorrow, we can face today. We can have joy in the midst of struggle, and we can have love like no other. So, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would be with us this morning, that you would speak to us directly, that the Holy Spirit would penetrate our hearts, that you would open up your word to us, and that we would become your people, that we would know the reason why we are here, and it's to know and celebrate and love you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church, we're... um, making our way through our series called The Reason Why. We've been looking at the the big reasons why we are here. Why are we here in the first place? You know, uh, we've said that the reason why God created earth was just so he could make human beings. And he made human beings so that he could make each one of you, each one of us, because he loves you. He loves you. That's why he made you. And we've learned what it looks like to love him back, what it looks like to show him worship, what it looks like to grow and become like Jesus, what it looks like to be brothers and sisters and learn how to love one another. And today we're going to talk once again about what it means to share that good news, to share the good news that God loves you with others. God wants you to know how much he loves you, and he wants to invite you into his family. And if you simply believe, then you are. You are part of God's family. And when you become part of God's family, then he invites you to go and share that news, to share that good news with others. God says, I want my house to be full. I want you to go out and bring even more people into my family. That's the reason why we are here. The fifth reason why we are here is to share the good news with others. God calls us to tell everyone, to tell everyone how Jesus Christ loves them and died for them. That's the good news, my friends. Sharing good news with other people, it's our mission. It's our our call to go. It's our mission as believers. It's the big reason why. You know, somebody at some point shared Jesus with you. That's probably why you're here this morning. That's how you became part of God's family. And God calls us to do the same, to go and share that good news with everybody else. So let's talk about how. How do we do that? Last week, we talked about bringing that we do this by bringing and by going. We bring folks in, we bring folks to meet the Jesus that we already know, and today we're gonna talk about going. What does it look like to go in the name of Jesus? If we wanna share that good news with people, we have to go to them. God expects us to go, go in his name wherever we can. We know this from one of Jesus' very most famous teachings. It's called the Great Commission. The Great Commission is in Matthew chapter 28. It says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. The Great Commission Jesus calls us forward. He calls us to go. And he doesn't say, go when you get around to it. 
He, he doesn't say, go when you can. He doesn't say, go when it's convenient. He says, go everywhere. Go now. Go to all the nations. Go tell everyone this good news. Friends, go should be a key word for us as believers. That brings me to number one. Number one, what do we do when we go? When we're out there going for Jesus, what do we do? What do we do? The, the answer to this is simple. We do what Jesus did. We do what Jesus did. Jesus set a great example for us, right? The, the best example we could have. We are called to believe in him and to follow him, so we follow the example he gave us. And he shows us the example of what it means to go. I mean, the very fact that he was on earth, he, he walked across eternity, he walked across the universe to come and be with us in person, in the flesh and blood. Philippians 2 lets us know this. It says, he left behind the glory of heaven. He left behind his glory and his titles and his royalty and his dominion. He gave up his divine privilege. He gave up his comfort. And he came down here to be a man, to be flesh and blood, to sweat, to hurt, to walk, to talk, to be with us, to reach out to us, to reach the lost people that he loves. Luke 19.10 says this, for the Son of Man, that's Jesus, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. That's why he came. He came down. He was willing to go. He was willing to go and seek us out. He went out of his way. He came to where we are. And now he calls us to do the same. He goes to everyone. You think about the stories of Jesus and how radical he was, how different he was from the other religious, religious leaders of his time. He goes to everyone in spite of their appearance, in spite of their past, how checkered it might be, in spite of any mistakes they may have made. Jesus reaches out, and he reaches out to sinners just like Romans 5.8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus is interest, interested in sinners because <laughs> that's all of us. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to prove yourself to him. He is already interested. His love for you is already there. His forgiveness is there waiting for you. And he calls us to go and, and, and to share that good news, that same good news for others who are lost. The Great Commission says, go, go, go and make disciples. Jesus makes it clear that part of following him is going. It's reaching out. It's serving and telling the lost about him. Because over and over, that's what we see him doing. He goes out and reaches out to all kinds of people. Think about the example Jesus gives us in the story of the woman at the well. You, you probably know this story, but Jesus is walking through Samaria, a region called Samaria, and he has intentionally gone this way to Samaria because nobody is reaching out to them. Nobody cares about them. Nobody likes them. Samaria is a land of outcast. And the disciples, they're, they're hot and dirty from walking to Samaria, and they do not want to be there. You know, the disciples were ordinary people just like you and I. And they did not want it. They did not like Samarians. When the disciples see that woman coming to the well, they leave. They go get some food. But not Jesus. Look at what John chapter 4 tells us. It says, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Now, if you look at what Jesus is doing, he's, he intentionally stays behind. He stays behind to talk to this outcast woman. He intentionally uh, leaves the comfort of his friends. He's all by himself, kind of in enemy territory here, right? And he intentionally chose to go there. He decided that they would take the, the dusty road into Samaria where nobody wanted to go. 
And now that he's there with the woman, he goes wildly against the, I can't overstate that, he goes wildly against the traditions and the social norms of his day, and he speaks to this woman. He speaks to the Samaritan woman, this lost, overlooked, abandoned, defeated, lonely woman, and he just asks her a question. He, he just starts a conversation with her. Can you give me a drink? Just like that, Jesus breaks down the primary barrier in evangelism. The, the primary barrier in evangelism. See, it's hard for us to go out. It's hard for us to share the good news. We're not very good at it. We're afraid of it. And there are many, many barriers that get in our way. Just like there were many, many barriers between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. There was the, the barrier of racism. The Jewish people did not like the race of Samarians. There was the barrier of religious agreement. They saw God and worshiped God in two different ways. There was the barrier between men and women in that day and age. In that culture, men did not speak to women. He was breaking all kinds of barriers. But the primary boundary that he is showing us how to break, the primary boundary in evangelism that most of us get stuck on is just the barrier of silence. It's the barrier of inaction, the barrier of just doing nothing, of just saying nothing at all. Because if we're, if we're honest with ourselves this morning, isn't that easier? I mean, it's easier just to leave things as they are, to, to stay silent, to say nothing at all. Of course it is. It's easier to not go out of your way. It's easiest to just stay in your circle, your, your comfort zone, and not do anything. But look at Jesus. I mean, look at Jesus. Jesus goes. Jesus reaches out. Jesus speaks to those in need. Jesus sensed the example of not being afraid to go even to the ones who are different, even to the ones who are looked down on. He takes the initiative to reach out to them. So Jesus went. He obeyed the call of his father. He healed and he helped and he spoke truth. And Jesus loved. He loved them enough to go to people especially to the least of these, especially to the ones who were called the least of these. So friends, when we go, we should do what Jesus did. Number two is this, where? Where does God want us to go? When we go, where do we go? As one of his last statements on earth, one of the very last things that Jesus tells his followers is where they should go. Where should we go with the good news? Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says this, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, to the ends of the earth. Jesus gives us four places, four places to go. But first, before we dive in, I want you to notice the word witnesses. If you have a pen, go ahead and circle that on your outline. Witnesses. You will be my witnesses. Now, this is where some of us get hung up because we think sharing the good news with somebody has to be complicated. We think we have to know all the answers. We, we think we have to be Jesus' defense attorney. Don't worry, Jesus. I am here to stand up for you. I'll set everyone straight. I'll win all the theological arguments. But Jesus doesn't ask us to defend him. He doesn't ask us to win all the arguments. And he definitely does not say, try to force me, try to coerce people into accepting my love for them. No, no. 
Jesus just says, you will be my witnesses. Witnesses. So what is a witness? It's real simple. A witness is just somebody who tells what they have seen. They tell what they have seen and experienced. They tell their story. They tell what they have seen God do. That's all they do. They tell what they've seen. No one else, nobody else can tell your story. There's a story of you and God. It might be a really short story. It might be a really long story, but there's a story of you and God and your relationship, and nobody can tell that story except for you. Only you can tell what God has done in your life. So what kind of things does a a witness say? Well, a witness might say something like, you know, Jesus helped me when blank. Or I have seen Jesus change my life, and here's how. I've seen him change the life of somebody else. Let me tell you about it. I I am different now because of Jesus. I found hope in my life because of Jesus. And a witness just tells what they know, what they've seen, what they have experienced. That's being a witness. Just tell others what changed you when you accepted the power of Christ into your life. Tell them what changed. Tell how Christ is continuing to change you and change others. Okay, let's go back to the question of where. Where do we do this? Where should we witness? Acts 1 says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I see you, Tommy. Getting ready to head out to South Africa. that's, That's almost as far away as you can get. That's pretty good, headed towards the ends of the earth. Now, you might think Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, what a... uh, I don't even know where these places are. I don't even live in Israel. I can't afford a plane ticket to the Middle East. How am I going to do this? Well, look at the model on your outline, those circles. Let's dive into what Jesus was telling his followers. You know, Jesus was actually laying out a strategy, a strategy of ever-increasing circles for his followers to go, to go and tell. Now, when Jesus said, go to Jerusalem, he's saying, start where you are. Start right where you are, because the disciples, they were already in Jerusalem. Start where you are. Start in your own backyard. Start with your town. Start with your family, your friends, your coworkers. In Jerusalem means those closest to me. That's where you start. The ones closest to me. Start right here. The next circle, Jesus says, go to Judea. Judea is all those nearby, all those who are in the area, in the region. Now, the region is larger than the city of Jerusalem. So you you start where you are. You start in your neighborhood, and then you work your way out. You go out to the whole countryside. You go out to the region of Judea. And next, you go to Samaria. And now Samaria is coming up for the second time in the sermon. I hope you're paying attention. Samaria was special, right? Samaria was full of people unlike me. Samaria was full of people who were different, who I didn't get along with, who I don't understand, who I don't want to understand, if I'm honest. Samaria was full of the wrong kind of people. And the Jews, the disciples, man, they did not like it. They did not like going there with Jesus. Samaria wasn't far away. It wasn't far away But it was a different world. It was full of people who were different, people who were outcast and looked down on and judged. So church, followers of Jesus, are you talking with anyone like that? Are you willing to talk with and interact with people like that? People who, who aren't just different than you, but people who are, who are shunned. People who are even hated by some around. 
Jesus says, go, go there. Go and tell them I love them just the same. So go, go to Samaria. At last, Jesus says, go to the whole world, (laughs) to the ends of the earth, to everybody else. He covers all his bases, right? Literally go out to the ends of the earth, everywhere you can find, tell everyone that's where he calls us to go. Love demands this. Love demands that we get out of our comfort zone. Love demands that we go out, that we go to people who are different, people who speak different languages, have different cultures, even to people that we don't like. Jesus is counting on us to go, to deliver that good news, to deliver that good news to everyone. Number three, number three is why. Why do we go? Why do we as the church go out and share the good news with everyone? Well, I've got a few reasons for you. First, letter A, Jesus commands us to go. Jesus doesn't beat around the bush about this one. He says that in Mark 16 to his followers, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Again, he's covering all his bases, right? All the world, all creation, preach the gospel. There's not much room for interpretation there. He's saying, get off your duff, get out there and go. Go everywhere in the world and tell everyone the good news. Next is letter B. Letter B, Jesus calls us to go. He calls us. He guides us into us. His last words to his followers before he ascended back to heaven was, you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. So go out and be that witness. You know, I mentioned last week that that one day we will stand before God and we'll give an account of how we used our lives. Well, what did we do with our lives? How did we serve Jesus? How did we help show the world his love? Did we do that work? Did we go to the world? Did we go to anyone at all? Did we bear witness when we had the chance? But friends, I, I don't want you to share the good news just because Jesus commands you to do it. I don't want you to share the good news just because he calls you or just because, you know, one day I'll have to give an account. I want you to share the good news because it has changed you. Because you have understood on the inside, you've embraced this fact, the fact that Jesus Christ loves you. And you know how it has changed you. And you, you have been changed. You have been forgiven and set free. You have been made whole by the love of Jesus, the fact that Jesus Christ loves you. That's why we have letter C. Letter C is Jesus calls us to love people too. The same way he loves us. He calls us to love people too. We will go share God's love with others because God's love is just spilling out of us because it's it's changed us and it's it's flowing, uh, it's overflowing out of us. It's part of who we are. He's filled us up more than we can know because Jesus has so changed us inside that we just can't keep it to ourselves. We we just can't help but talk about this good news. We will go because God brought us into his family. Because he invites us to be part of his plan for the world. He invites us to go and bring even more people in to the family of God. We get to play a part. And church, we should be excited (laughs) We should, be, we should be excited to share. We should be so full of the love that God gives that we can't help it. And I've been there. And I know that. But I'm not always there. 
And I know you're not always there either. And that's why we come together for the other reasons why. That's why we've got to get together in worship. That's why we've got to get together and encourage one another and, and help each other grow to become more like Jesus. That's why we've got to have the encouragement of fellowship together and share with one another. We need each other. As, as incredible as it was, truly incredible, when I first met Jesus and he changed my life, Man, there's been, a, there's been a roller coaster since then. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> and we need each other to get through those downs. And we need each other to celebrate those high points. We get to do this together as part of God's family. 2 Peter 3.9 says this about God. It says, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God wants everyone to hear, so he's patient. He waits, and his love goes out. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. He wants everyone to hear. He wants all people to hear the good news and to be part of his family. So friends, as long as there's one person, just one person out there somewhere who hasn't heard yet about how Jesus loves them, we as Christians must continue to go. We got to continue to go. Whatever words you might use when you go, they might be big theological words. They might be small, short, simple words. They might be elegant and poetic words. Just remember this. The words don't mean much. <laughs> The words don't matter much unless they start with love. You've got to start with love. Telling the good news about God always starts with love. Evangelism is not about holding a sign. It's not about shouting, repent, repent. Because you just scare people away, right? I saw Cody jump. It's about helping somebody get just one step closer. You know, that sometimes somebody is ready and you can just tell them all about Jesus in one setting, but that's not usually how it goes. Usually you're just helping them get one step closer to knowing God, to knowing that Jesus loves them, and you just help them get one step closer. We can do that by serving them. We can do that by loving them, by being generous to them, by showing our faith in the hard times, in those deep valleys, by sharing our story, right? Just our simple story, and by not being afraid. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to argue. We don't have to pester. We definitely don't have to belittle or judge anybody. No way. We just got to share the love of God with them. We just got to go. We go. We love. We witness. We tell what we've seen. And we share the good news from a foundation of love. So Anchor Church, do you, do you know any people that need the Lord? Do, do you love do you love anyone who needs the Lord? Do you remember to pray, to pray for those people, to pray for the people that maybe you wrote down last week on your outline? Do you even remember who you wrote down last week on your outline? Because the world wants to keep you distracted. The world wants to keep your mind and your heart off of this. But God wants everyone to know. He wants your friends and your family to know. He wants everybody to know that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. The message can be that simple. We follow Christ's example. We reach out to all kinds of people. We show compassion because God has shown compassion for us. And we speak up, but we speak up with love and with humility. 
God wants to use you, church. He wants you to be his witness to show his amazing, amazing love. And here's a bonus. If you've been a believer for a while, you may know this, that, that as you witness, as you get out there and you go and you, you put yourself out there, you start to share the good news, you, you get stretched and you start to grow as a believer. You start to grow and know Jesus even more. For example, I, I know this myself. I know how much I have grown at the times when I've been serious about sharing the good news, at the, the times when I've gone out and witnessed. You know, way back in high school, I, I shared my faith many, many times in high school with all kinds of effects, right? <laughs> you know, some people... Uh, Jesus came and changed their lives, and some people never talked to me again. <laughs> but it was a growing experience. It was this amazing time in my faith. And then in college, down at Huntington University, I, I took an entire class on evangelism. I spent a whole class on evangelism, how to do this, right? And a big part of our grade was that we had to journal about how we went out and cold witnessed, right, to strangers, how we went out and tried to tell complete strangers about Jesus. You know, I've, I've gone out on the streets of New York in, in January when it was freezing and talked to a, an immigrant family there from Puerto Rico who was stuck in the cold with their children and tried to tell them how much God loves them while we shivered together. I've, I've witnessed on the streets of Chicago and, and to homeless in Miami. In, in Toronto one time, I was up there with some pastor friends and we tried to witness to a, a handful of prostitutes <laughs> you know, outside on the street in the wrong part of town. It didn't go that well. <laughs> I wish I had that story, but it didn't go that well. I've told people about Jesus in the homeless shelters of Los Angeles. Tijuana, West Virginia. In Denver, just a, just a couple years ago, I, I met a young man named Patrick. We were walking around on a Friday night, and Patrick was a, a well-dressed, handsome young man. He was handing out free beer right there on the street corner as a way to advertise his new store, his new store of, you know, grooming supplies for men. It was a free beer. You know, so we stopped and talked to Patrick for a minute. And then we kept talking to Patrick. And then we started to ask Patrick a little bit about his life. And Patrick said, you know, something's different about you. So if, you got, if you don't mind, I, I've got some stuff going on in my life. Do you guys have time that I could just talk to you? And we sat down and talked to Patrick until 3 o'clock in the morning. And we started telling him about Jesus uh, about midnight. <laughs> and about one o'clock in the morning, he was so excited about Jesus, he left at one in the morning, went and picked up his girlfriend at their apartment and brought her back so that we could tell her about Jesus. And you know, the, these stories don't happen very often, but they'll never happen if we don't go. They'll never happen if we're not ready to play our part, to go where God calls us. A couple years ago, Anchor Church took a, a, a missions trip to Yonkers, New York, right up there on the north side of, of New York City. And we met with some really incredible people there. And, and one of the pastors there, Noel, he goes out on the street every week, every week. He goes out on the busy streets of, of the city there, and he tries to share Jesus with people. He tries to invite people to come to church. And, and it's, it's a needy, it's a rough spot in the city. And he prays for those in need, for those who are broken. And that was, that was maybe the most important part of the trip for me for me to see him and for me to remember what it's like to be fired up for Jesus, to not be able to, to not speak up, right? 
to be so excited about what God was doing that you got to get out there and tell somebody. And Anchor, you know, we're here every Sunday. You know, Vacation Bible School, VBS, it's just around the corner. That's a huge opportunity for us to go out and speak up, to share some good news, to share an invitation, to welcome people in. Then it's going to be a great time for us. So I want you to think about signing up as a volunteer, and I want you to be praying about that. Because if you live in this neighborhood or if you drive through this neighborhood, there's kids everywhere. There's kids everywhere. And most of them don't know what I'm telling you today. They need that hope. So be praying about it. Be ready to go. Be ready to serve your mission with your family, your friends, your coworkers, your classmates, your neighbors. Let's commit to reaching out, to praying for others, to inviting them and telling them and bringing them and going to them. That's the reasons why we are here. We are here to share the good news. So anchor, are you willing? Are you ready to go? Because our mission, our mission is so important. Our mission has the power to change lives. Our mission is held up and backed up by the power of God himself. So are you ready? Are you willing to take a risk? Will you, will you take any risk to get that good news out there? Because God wants everyone to know. He wants everyone to know his plan for them. He wants everyone to know that your past, no matter what, can be forgiven. He wants everyone to know that you can have a new life through the power and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, a new life that lasts for all eternity. God wants everyone to know. Amen. Well, guys, I, I want to wrap up with a story, uh, just a, a little story. Um, a after Jesus' death and resurrection, he, he goes back to heaven, and the angels are there. They're excited to meet him, and they say, Jesus, oh, that was so amazing. What a fantastic plan. You made a way for imperfect people to be welcomed into God's perfect heaven. And Jesus replies, yeah, it's, it was amazing. It, it's called salvation. You know, I died to pay the penalty for their sins. And human, free, human beings, they're, they're free to accept my gift, and they can be forgiven and, and set free. It's really good news. The angel said, oh, Jesus, that's incredible. What an amazing message. How, how are we going to spread that message? How are we going to get that good news out to every generation of people everywhere? And Jesus smiles a bit and he says, you know, I'm trusting the human beings to share it. The angels gasp. Jesus, are you kidding? You're going to trust the, the self-centered, egotistical, apathetic, lazy, got other things to do humans? Uh, they, they might get it for themselves, Lord, but they're, they're not going to go out and pass it on. Jesus, what, what's plan B? And you know what Jesus said. There is no plan B. There is no plan B. We are his plan. We are his plan. And it's our great privilege to go and tell. It's the reason why we are here. Amen? Well, church, at this time, we're going to prepare for communion. Uh, so everyone should have a, a cup on their seat. Um, you are welcome to take communion with us if, if you're a believer in Jesus. Uh, this is open to anyone uh, who wants to celebrate and remember the work of Christ with us. You don't have to be a member or anything like that. But as you, um, as you prepare your hearts for communion, I want you to, to spend some time talking to God yourself. Spend some time with, with the Lord and, and confess what you need to confess. Confess where you fall short. 
ask for his mercy, his grace. He, he wants to help you. He's ready to hear your prayer. Let's take a minute now. And, and in the silence, we will do that. We'll talk to God. Let's talk to him now. Lord, I confess my sin to you. I know that I fall short. I know that I need your good news, your love to rescue me. Lord, I know how much you care about lost people because I know how you reached out and cared for me when I was so lost. And I say thank you. And we remember you, Jesus. We remember what you've done for us. We look at the cross and we know that you love us. We remember how your body was beaten and bruised and torn for us. We remember how your blood was shed that paid a, a price that we could never pay that forgives us and cleans us and makes us whole and new again. You welcome us into a new life through your spirit. And even though we fall and we stumble along the way, you continue to pick us back up. What amazing love, what amazing love. And Jesus, with you in our hearts and our minds, we remember your crucifixion. We remember your sacrifice now. In your holy name, amen. Church, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ forgiving our sins. Amen. Well, church, at this time, we will uh, transition a bit. Uh, the ushers will prepare for offering. And Tia, if you want to come down, you can do that now. Uh, also, any, uh, anyone in elementary age, um, we have a class for you. Uh, you can head down the hallway to your class right now. Uh, all elementary age or, or close to that, you can head down with Karen here and enjoy your class. In the meantime, the rest of us uh, will prepare for the, for the morning offering, and we'll uh, look at our announcements. We'll get ready to have a little bit of sermon sequel time. Uh, I got excited and made up seven sermon sequel questions, so uh, you're definitely taking some of those home today. Um, but it looks like the ushers are ready, so let's... Uh, Let's pray once again for the offering. Father God, I pray that you would um, use us, use all that we are to bring glory and honor to yourself. Lord, I pray that you would use the, the financial gifts and the spiritual gifts and uh, the time and energy that you've given us. I pray that you would use the, the passion and all that we are, our experiences, good and bad. Use all of us and all that we are to bring glory to you. So, Lord, bless this offering, bless Anchor Church, that it could do just that, that we could share the good news of how much you love us with all those around us. We ask for your blessings in Jesus' holy name, amen. Ushers, you can come forward. And uh, Tia, you've got announcements. Trey, do you have the mic on for Christia? Here, let me, we'll get you on camera there. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm going to do announcements today. If you um, want to join in with the Sunday schools on Sunday morning, it's at 830. I think it's changed a little bit, uh, but come and there's a couple different options for you to um, just dive a little bit deeper into the word uh, with Rick Bailey or Scott Harris, and it's open to everybody. 
and it's such a good time. Uh, softball game this Tuesday is at 7.05. So come, if you've never been to an anchor game, come and, and just cheer us on. And uh, we have the best fans in the league, I got to say. And the team is pretty awesome, too. Um, it's a really fun time. Um, ice cream social for the ladies. I'm so excited about this. Now, uh, Clara is hand making ice cream. So I'm super excited about that. Um, she's right there. It is, it'll be on um, the June 24th, which is a Thursday evening here. And so we can bring, bring your own toppings and uh, we can just put them on that homemade ice cream. And it's just a fun time for ladies to get together and eat some good ice cream and toppings and just chat with each other and have some good fellowship. That's uh, Thursday, June 24th. Um, also the Tin Caps game. We have like so many people coming to this game. It is such a fun night uh, with Anchor at the Tin Caps. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, I, are there any available? I don't know. Yeah. What? what? Deadline. Deadline is next week. So if you want to come, make sure that you join us and get your tickets because we might sell out. We have a lot. That's July 9th, Anchor at the Tin Caps. Also, we, uh, as Kevin mentioned, VBS is coming up this summer, and we really want to make this great for our neighborhood. So we need kind of all hands on deck. So if you have time on Sunday, July 11th, after church, we're just going to have a quick meeting and just talk about, like, the crafts and, and um, the games and all the stuff that we would want to do uh, and just where you can plug yourself in and just help bless this community. Uh, um, I think Stephanie's going to take care of lunch for us, so that'll be an incentive as well. As well. So um, I think that's it. Thank you. Isn't she lovely? Okay, I shouldn't sing. Sorry. Thank you, Tia. We appreciate you. Um, hey, I know an announcement. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> it's great to see uh, so many of you here today, and I, uh, if you have the chance, I hope you get to, to celebrate your dad today or, or give him a call, or uh, maybe the most you can do is, is pray for him, uh, so, but um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers with us here. Uh, okay, sermon sequel, uh, we've got a lot of questions uh, that we can dive into, um, let's start with number one. Uh, what does it mean to, to be a witness? What, what does that mean to you? You can, uh, you know, just quote something out of the sermon or add a little of your own flavor to it, but yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, is anybody, Zoe, can you get our mics today? All right, right, right there. Can you tell us uh, your name? Is that Holly? Hey, Holly. I think uh, what, it, what does it mean to be a witness? Just to tell somebody about something that you know. Okay. Tell somebody about you, something you know. Or that you've seen or right on. something like that. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Just tell somebody what you know. Very good. Uh, who else? Uh, what, what does witnessing mean to you? What's it look like to you? How do you think about it? I see Clara and Bev. Well, I think it has a lot to do kind of with like how I live my life. Like I often ask myself, if anybody looks at me or listens to mm. me, why would they ever want to be a Christian? Oh, yeah. You know, what about me makes that attractive? Hey, can, can everybody hear that okay? Ra raise your hand if you can hear that. Okay, all right. Um, I know it's a little hard to hear with the, with the fans, but I love that. Uh, when somebody looks at my life, uh, would they want to be a Christian by looking at my life? Would they want to follow Jesus knowing that I'm a follower of Jesus? That was, am I pretty close? Yeah, that's great. Because you can witness without words, right? Go ahead. Sure. So like, it's even like, um, I look at some people, or even I could complain all the time. Yeah. Are we always complaining about things? Or do we have joy in our life? If anybody looks at me, do they see the joy and they want that? Or do they just look at whatever, you know? Yeah. Great word, Clara. Thank you. Uh, Bev here and then Scott. 
I'm going to turn the fan down so I can hear a little better. <laughs> I was going to say, just be myself, you know, because my ex used to say, I can make a best friend in a Kmart checkout lane. And that's all <laughs> you have to do is open your mouth and, and talk to people. You know, it doesn't take anything special. And yeah. you don't have to be afraid, you know. Strangers usually are welcoming of conversation wherever you are. You and bet. That, you know, and especially if they do need help, they're really ha happy that you're leaning to that to talk to them and help them, you know. And so just be yourself. Absolutely, Bev. Good word. It, it, you, it has to start somewhere. And it starts just by saying the first word, by uh, being friendly, uh, starting a conversation. Uh, that greatest barrier for most of us between us and, and sharing the good news with somebody, it's, it's just silence. It's just saying, ah, not today. It's just saying nothing at all. So, yeah, Scott, go ahead. This is from online. Beth says, I've always loved the moon analogy. We don't have any light of our own, but just like the moon, we hmm. can bring God's light to our world if we keep our faces toward him. Wow. All right, Beth. Beth chiming in from Michigan. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, like the moon, uh, we don't have the light ourselves, but we can reflect the light when we keep our face pointed towards him, pointed towards the sun. All right. Good stuff. Good thoughts. Um, how about number two? How can we go and, and reach out right here in Fort Wayne? Uh, what's maybe some ways you have done this or some ideas you have or what's a way we can go? Yeah, Dylan. I would just say naturally building relationships with the people we see every day. It's most likely that a lot of the people that we see every day are people that probably don't have a faith. Um, yeah. I'm sure there are some people too that we'd have a relationship, you know, at work or something like that, that do have a faith, but just building a relationship and showing them the love of Christ is what might stand out to them. All right. Yes, uh, it's being intentional, right? Wherever you find yourself, at work or uh, on the road with friends, um, start those conversations. I see Scott and then Tom, and then way back there is Warren. This is not from online. This is from me. Uh, we got kind of uh, stalled by COVID, in case you've heard of COVID. <laughs> I've heard but of that. Yeah. There's a group of us in town that are seeking to uh, have a community, a, kind of a network of Christians in Canterbury Green Apartments yeah, that okay. welcome people. It's the most international place in town, a number of immigrants, refugees, and international students. Uh, move in there, and we want to be welcoming, uh, loving, and helping connect newly arrived internationals with Americans wow. and others in town. Yeah. Um, Man, so that's, okay. that's like yeah. half my sermon there, Scott. That's great. <laughs> Glad to cover half of your sermon. Therefore, it's like reaching to the ends of the earth without leaving Fort Wayne. Yeah, that's pretty, that's amazing. Yep. Uh, Tom? And then uh, Warren in the back and Ken. I think spread the good news to the people. You bet. Just, and just communicate do it. with people, too. All right, Tom. Thank you. Tom, I appreciate you, man. You've always got a good word, something to say. So thank you, brother. Uh, Zoe, we've got Ken. And then off to your left is, is Warren there in the, in the back row. I would say um, to reach out to people, just be yourself and just show them that you're true to yourself you know that you make mistakes and oh, i've came yeah. across a lot of people we used to have a when we lived in town we used to have like fire pits in the backyard and on saturday nights we'd have like a little bible study just really short like 20 minutes or something just sit around talk to our neighbors and there was there was catholics methodists Okay. Were, I mean, so we had a big, and, and you just, just opened up your backyard. Your, don't think that your religion is bigger than theirs, because their religion's probably ninety ninety percent the same as yours. Sure. Yeah. They just they just worship different than you do, and they preach different than we do, and it doesn't it doesn't affect us. So just give that love. 
All right. Share love. The, like directly, literally with your neighbors, man. You just opened up your backyard and invited folks over. Uh, Warren, go ahead. Uh, back in 2003, I was actually burnt severely. And I uh, took over the Lord at that time. Uh, I died seven times on the operating table. And I give it. I take this testimony to everybody that I meet. Okay. Wow. Wow. So you've got a story to tell, don't you, brother? All right. Thank you, Warren. I'm glad you're with us today, man. Glad you're here. Uh, Steve, and then we'll, uh, we'll move on. Oh, and Kathy. Well, I didn't say this, but uh, James, the brother of Jesus, said, it's my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Hmm. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes we try to put, you know, restrictions on people, and you have to change in order to do this, and you have to, you have to become this to know God, and, you know, we just need to keep it simple, stupid. I mean, it's just <laughs> Keep a, it simple. That's know. right, man. Thanks. Good word, man. Good thoughts this morning, Steve. Um, keep it simple. Don't make it difficult for them to come. Uh, to, to find Jesus. Kathy. I think we should just greet people like we do here at church. Some people with a nice hello. I like to hug people. So people, you know, give them a hug, smile. That could start their day right there. And then that puts them in a good mood. And then maybe you, you could get the word of God. You bet. To you make somebody's day with a smile, a hug, a handshake, a hello. You bet. You bet. Share that joy. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to let you guys take a lot of these questions home today. Uh, you know, maybe I, it's my hope that you will talk about some of these at home uh, or with a friend, a fellow believer, maybe over lunch, you know, maybe even you're going to go out for lunch today. Uh, so just keep that little outline with you. Look over these questions. Um, I think question three is really interesting too, right? Uh, where is Samaria today? Uh, what is Samaria like in the United States? Who is looked down on? Who's outcast? Who are, are most people not going to? Like, I, I might go out and talk to somebody about Jesus, but I'm not going there. You know, maybe that's the, the inner city for you. Maybe that's... Um, folks that go to a different church, maybe that's folks of a different race, maybe it's uh, people from other countries, you know, especially those other countries we're, we're not supposed to like, right? Because their leaders are trouble. I'm not going to say their leaders aren't trouble. That doesn't mean all their people are trouble. No, people are people. So think about where and who Samaria is for you. And if you've been a believer for a while, like this might be something brand new for you. If this is brand new ideas for you telling somebody else about Jesus, just go anywhere. Tell somebody easy, right? Tell it to your best friend. Practice. But if you've been a believer for a while, you better find Samaria. And you better not be afraid to show love even there, even there. God's, God calls us to that. Music team, why don't you come back up? And uh, we'll close by singing together, by worshiping together with a couple songs today. Um, yeah, I'm excited to do that. All right, let's stand and sing together. compassion love that's never failing 
the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great How great is our God Age to age he stands And time is in his hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The God had three and one Father, Spirit, Son the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise and my heart will sing how great is our God name above all names worthy of all praise and my heart will sing how great is our God sing it out one more time anchor church he's the name above all names 
He's worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Amen, church. It is our God. Amen. Mm, yes, yes. Our God is so great. He's so good to us. And it gives us the privilege of sharing that with others. So church, I, I, I want to say just a couple things. I, I want you to remember to pray for Tommy as she's leaving tomorrow to go to South Africa to the ends of the earth. Lift up her and, and Marquia and all our redemption house. Uh, hey, I invite, we're, we're a day late. We're a day late, but I invite you to celebrate Juneteenth. To celebrate freedom. Freedom is always, always worth celebrating. And that is something new for many, but it is a celebration that is worthy. Ah, God bless our African-American brothers and sisters. And uh, for our fathers. Boy, it's It's hard. <laughs> It's hard, Father, so be encouraged. Seek your courage and your strength and your energy and your wisdom from our holy, heavenly Father. Find him, seek him first, and he will make your path straight. With his help, you can do it. You can be the Father he has called you to be. So God bless you, fathers. And now, church, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you. Have a great week. Thank you.